there's two kinds of black people in public life. There's tree shakers and there's jelly makers. There's people going, ah, 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 look at me, I'm knocking these trees, look at me knock this tree down, oh, I'm making noise. And there's people who have to pick the nuts up and pick the fruit up and make something out of it. We come from very humble beginnings. My sister, my mother and I in the projects of Brownsville in East New York, very, very uh, tough area. My mother was one of those characters out of like one of those black inspirational stories. She had already taught me my ABCs and how to basically read by the time I was in the first grade. But the teacher I had in the first grade was very lazy. My mother went up to the school, raised a ruckus. That woman actually was kind of removed at some point during the semester. My mother had gone to night school and was actually uh, teaching at my elementary school by the time I was graduating. So she was always a, a, a woman who didn't take no for an answer. So I've never been really big. I've always been an, about, okay, doing. It's not about complaining, it's about doing. When I was a young guy coming up, I wanted to read certain books, and they didn't exist. Or oh, very few of them existed. If they did exist, they were, they were written by white people about black culture. The turning point for me was this really was um, an article I read in Rolling Stone magazine. This article was an article about a, a band, a black group, and the writer didn't, I could tell the writer didn't dance, right? He wrote about this particular record like it was a, a Bob Dylan record. And it was a dance record, and it was an R&B dance record. He's writing about the lyrics and not about the rhythm. And if you can't write about black music, you can't understand black culture unless you deal with rhythm. So that was a turning point for me. I said, I could write what this guy does because I think I got a better idea about what's going on here than he does. And that really struck me. I actually ended up becoming a mascot at Billboard magazine. It was the era of disco. No one wanted to review a disco act. Sid Nelson. So I would go to the gay club at 2 o'clock in the morning and review the gay band. Hey, heavy metal. No one wants to review heavy metal. Sid Nelson. So I was watching Ted Nugent with ACDC opening at Madison Square Garden. Now you want to talk about some crazy stuff? Woo! And I ended up doing a lot of music-based or entertainment culture-based writing. And writing about black culture then led me into doing uh, movies, and then TV shows I've worked on, and the documentaries I'm doing now, they all come out of the same, the same training that came out of being a full-time journalist for most of my 20s and 30s. My sister uh, contracted HIV virus in 1993. I did a film for HBO in 2007 with Queen Latifah called Life Support, which was basically based on my sister's life. I did a film earlier this year, uh, in 2012, about Magic Johnson, his announcement for ESPN. I think that Magic and his wife felt comfortable talking with me about it because it, it's not, it was an outsider thing that really means a lot to me. So doing these two films about HIV are very important to me. The infection rate is still incredibly high, particularly in places like where I grew up, in Brownsville, East New York. It rivals the infection rate in some parts of Central Africa. I'm not an activist, I'm not, I don't, I'm a speech of fire, but there's a space that there's so much to be done. It's my job to pick up that stuff and make something good out of it. And that's what I try and do, to try and be part of making something good.